I want to talk more about Teletubbies reenacting Basic Instinct. Is that like when when Lala sort of uh, she's, w- she's sat in like she's just sat in a chair and then she like come crosses her legs and then crosses it again. In a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to see if they can actually get their legs crossed. I don't think they'll be able to because their legs are little stubby things, aren't they? Little stubby legs. Can you imagine the Teletubbies with normal sized legs, proportionate legs? <laughs> that upsets me. That's horrible. That's not a nice. That's not a nice thought. We should make this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I'm down, actually. Just tell us all these remakes of things. Or something we can get cheaper costumes of. <laughs> no, all you do is get a coat hanger and colour it different colours and stick it on your head. Okay, and then it's just awesome to me. Or yeah, you you want to paint yourself. Yeah, you get, you get like a wire coat hanger. Or we, we, we could green screen it. We could get some morph suits. Do you have a green screen? No, but you don't have to have an actual screen. You use the morph suit and then... <laughs> or like, you know, with Sonny, just like, the like green over man. It. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> except with graphics over it. Well, not if you dip, so you don't need the graphics. Which one's dipsy? The, the green one. one. The green one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. Nice. There you go. Well, we can just get different coloured morph suits. That's probably the best yeah. idea. And then the coat hangers. And then, like, a, just a piece of paper for the TV. No, slap chap an iPad to your stomach. All right, yeah. <laughs> With Netflix yeah. on it. <laughs> then there's a lot less editing. Hello and welcome to the Snapshot Podcast, your number one spot for a theatre podcast that gets hella distracted. However, this isn't technically the Snapshot Podcast and we're not going to get hella distracted. Uh, This is something new. This is a new series called Snapshot Meets, where one of either me or Corny will meet with an emerging artist from the sort of Manchester area and we'll just sort of talk about their practice, their influences that sort of thing and this is episode one and joining me today is uh, a good friend of mine filmmaker charlie gasson hello hi charlie you should change snapshot meets to a soy based alternative <laughs> it's starting off well <laughs> <laughs> all right so charlie do you want to uh, just introduce yourself tell us who you are what you do that I'm sort of thing charlie gasson what do you want to know my age i'm 22 <laughs> 23 soon june 8th buy me some presents <laughs> soon oh no <laughs> I've got part life for the whole thing I'm working you've fallen apart and we're like two minutes in hey just keep it just edit <laughs> it's a conversation you've never had a conversation with me before oh, well, it's should, just should, gonna go normally I should have known how this is it's gonna, gonna go, go like every conversation we have okay. I'm not a professional no so I'm behind the camera well tell us about being behind the camera well there you go good segue segue yes <laughs> Um, I, I make films when I can uh, in between trying to get different jobs trying to keep jobs for more than a week <laughs> <laughs> I think two two weeks is the least time I've ever had a job okay which is bad but that's sort of that is an issue because like obviously you just you come from the sort of Manchester area like Great Manchester area all over it yeah like you've been you've been near where I used to live before we knew each other basically around the corner yeah you um you've been in Wigan You've been in other places. I've been in Wigan. I'm moving to Liverpool soon. What? Oh, I'll not tell you that. No. Well, uh, well my mum's got a new job. I'm moving to Liverpool. Okay, cool. I'm very happy. Nice. Basically city centre. That's all right. But, um, but yeah, no, so you're from the sort of Manchester area. And the sort of issue is with being sort of, from the sort of work, more working class backgrounds, is it's, it can be difficult to sort of be a creative whilst also holding down a job to sort of help you live. 100%. At the same time. The mo- yeah, the most, the most time I've ever had to make films you know you just think of a film let's just say I'm just sitting about the house now I'll, I'll have a film idea and I can't go make it mm. straight away but when I was in college you, you it was easy the time or the funds exactly and you know you've got to plan it out with friends you know, I'm not just making a film on my own because I'll end up making some like David Lynch thing I'd like that and though no, you'd like it no one else will <laughs> I'm not. I'm not slamming yeah. David Lynch there last time you were left to your own device to make a film you made a film called Pizza Time well, yeah, so... <laughs> Which I really enjoyed. Well, that, that was a weird one, but th- that was that was easy to do because it was off the cuff. Like, we'd literally thought of it and then went into another room and filmed it within two hours. Yeah. From thinking of it, it was filmed in two hours and then took an hour to edit. That's not bad. That's a good turnaround. A very good turnaround because it was the day before the assignment was due in and I'd already decided I'm not going to do the assignment. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I had no ideas. And then we had the idea whilst watching Probably It's Always Sunny. I don't think we were watching anything about pizza. So you were probably watching Always Sunny and you were like, like let's make... Cloudy with a chance of m- meatballs. <laughs> you were watching Always Sunny and you were like, let's make... What is it the film they keep remaking? 
Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon. <laughs> Let's make Recall Lethal Weapon 7. Yes. Oh, we should do that. No, I think I feel like that's taken. So, so Charlie, you're a, so you're a filmmaker and director, right? When I can be. When you can be. Yeah. I wouldn't say that's my main main description. No? I wouldn't call myself a filmmaker. I don't go around telling people that. So what would you describe yourself as? I'm not paid to do it. I feel like once I'm paid to do it, I can tell people that. Is that? And once I earn money, not necessarily getting paid by someone else. I think that's I think that's a fair a fair way to go about things. Yeah. I do describe myself as a theatre maker now, but then because I have you know an MA and a BA in theatre making, I think I'm probably qualified to say that I am one. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, you could call yourself an actor and filmmaker. I wouldn't call myself an actor though, because it's like I haven't done that much you know credited well i've done a few bits it's here it. and there how much acting did you get to do though in your last year or, or over uni anyway um i think from the sounds of it it was a lot of written stuff it, yeah it was, well it was more making than you know there was never like you know the only times i like sort of got a script and acted in you know but in front of the camera was when someone on a different course asked me to be in the film okay yeah yeah but um so it wasn't a straight up performance degree it was because i did do before i did get marked on performances and you saw one yeah, you collaborated on one. I, yes, in collaboration with. Because you you did get a, you got a uh, a little credit didn't you on the I made sure you got a credit on. You made sure I did on the. Uh, on the little Why did you brochure. have to? Did you have to fight for that? But I just said I just said to him like please make sure you put Charlie's name on it. Oh, okay, he did bits. That sounds easy enough. Yeah, but thank you, mm. thank you. Uh, but that, yeah, that's one hundred percent your film. I mean, you've you you've made more film than I have. In that, that half an hour, that's more film than I've ever made. I mean, we can talk about all that. together. We can talk about that later, right? So, am I right in thinking that have you only made the? So, obviously, you're um you do your filmmaking part time, like yeah. you're starting out, which is a lot of people do. And I think, I think when you're um when you're like an early years artist, like an emerging sort of artist doing it on your own terms, the best thing you can do is to make your own stuff. You can't wait for someone else to ask you to make something. Mm. Definitely not as hundred percent because I'm can... not going to ask you. <laughs> I found that if you, if you just tell people you're a filmmaker or tell people you like films they're not going to ask you to make one no unless you know the right people and yeah. they trust you and even like as an actor you can't just wait for someone to say can you be an ish you have to sometimes go around making your own stuff get out there So go do some crap stuff for a bit the two things that I definitely know that you did make were Peter Time which you made with Kieran your friend yeah. and then Artism that I was in so Artism is the only film I've made just for fun straight up like it wasn't for anything Peter Tame was for uni technically mm-hmm. um, and there was there were some other things that obviously we collaborated with in uni and college there's there were at least two more films I made in uni one I can find but it's not very good okay we were given a script I was put as cinematographer having held a camera probably like twice other than <laughs> my phone um, that was fun though some beautiful shots so that's probably the best bit about the film okay uh, other than that can't find the other one that's a documentary about Kieran a documentary about Kieran yeah okay it was good can't find it anywhere now it used to be on YouTube but it's gone was it, was it actually about so so Kieran for people at home is um, he's a he's a friend of mine and, and mine Charlie's and he's like a collaborator with, with you for a lot of time he does a lot of your camera work I need him I need is... him to make films yeah if not just my own sanity but he, he understands what I'm thinking about and he understands where I'm going wrong. I think that's really important as well, right? When you're um when you're working with someone and you're sort of collaborating, you de- you definitely need someone who's on the same page. Yeah. Like it's it's all right to go out and to find somebody who has the right expertise that you want, but if you're not you know, if you're not in sort of in unison, if you're not working together on the right sort of same page, it's not gonna work. Exactly. That's so, why I prefer independent stuff. You know, you can just have time to chill with your friends. There's no time constraints of having to find professionals hmm. who probably won't understand you. They'll they'll come with their own agendas. Yeah. So it's like so with you, Kieran, being your sort of cinematographer, I guess is what you would call it. Basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kieran being your cinematographer because you you take a sort of directorial role and a sort of you know like a major loose role. directorial role. I like to give people freedom. Yeah, but um. You need Kieran to be on something because he knows he's picking up what you're putting down. He knows what you want to do. Exactly. In the same way, when when we collaborate together, obviously we knew what we wanted to do and we we worked well together. Me and Courtney probably know each other better than anyone else in the world. Yeah. So that that helps when we want to make. But I feel like if we if me and you hadn't met, and then I just oh, wanted a horrible world that would be. I know, right? But if me and you hadn't <laughs> met, and then I just needed like some sort of filmmaking, we weren't, you know, sort of. 
work on the same sort of page, it wouldn't make for we, a good end product. Yeah. You'd need that time to get to know each other first, mate. You don't want to get to know people on the film. No. You need icebreakers. Icebreakers, yes. Otherwise known as the worst thing that anyone's ever invented. <laughs> what Christopher Nolan does is um, he shows people films, I think, before he made Inception or The Dark Knight or something. He screened like three films for all the cast and crew. Okay. Which is sort of a good idea. You don't really get a chance to talk to each other, which I think is the most important thing, but you, you get a sense of what vibe they're going for. You bring people to the same level, which is a decent idea, if yeah. you've got the time to do it, to get everyone there. I mean, that's a lot of people. I mean, at least 100 people there. So if you... So say if you were in Nolan's position there, then, and you were going to... You were directing a film, and you were bringing on people that you didn't know. Mm. How would you go about sort of creating a more of a like a sort of collaborative community vibe how would you do it community vibe get everyone drunk together on the first night is that how you do it 100 percent. get people drunk together you go through about two weeks of social interaction within a night okay <laughs> you well, don't I, drink though do. i don't drink but you wouldn't have to because i already know you and you get along with people as long as everyone else is in that vibe and you're so, not uncomfortable so, with that so what you're saying is you would get people in a sort of sort of like in a more friendly less sort of like workplace environment just... exactly a chilled party vibe yeah i don't want any stress on having to do a job at that point mm. and then give everyone the morning off to recover yeah and then start filming one o'clock sharp <laughs> six in the morning <laughs> next day <laughs> wake up <laughs> it's time let's go <laughs> just you just walk out the pub and go straight to the set yeah 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 we'll just film in the pub <laughs> let's just remake shot of dead we'll do those scenes first <laughs> Oh no, that will be remade one day, won't it? Do you think? Ah, oh, yeah, everything's getting remade, and it's a classic already. It's a cult classic. Yeah. Well, you were saying to me on the way home that, um, like, Jurassic World is essentially just a remake of Jurassic Park One. This seems to be uh, uh it, it seems to be becoming a trend. So, sorry for the people who love Star Wars, but Force Awakens was a remake of the first three Star Wars films, okay. mainly A New Hope. Okay. But every plot point was parallel to something big in those three films mm. even to touch on the mcu doctor strange is quite similar to iron man one there you go yeah so um, I mean, marvel... they're quite similar characters though marvel had their own formula and that's okay and they seem to be breaking out of it which is good but yeah so doctor strange ant-man basically the same plot mm -hmm. that had its own problems because they had to rush a script after getting rid of edgar wright yeah i was gonna say wasn't edgar wright on board to do ant-man originally and Ant-Man was meant to be a lot earlier in the MCU. Some of it is his. Oh, is it? And what? Wasn't Ant-Man meant to be a lot earlier in the MCU than he was? I'm not sure, actually. Because the original Avengers in the comics, Ant-Man is one of the original Avengers. Yeah, but Hank Pym. But Hank Pym yeah. and... Because they're basically set in the 70s, 80s, depending yeah. on what runs you read. But yeah. In Endgame, you can, there's a shot of the original Ant-Man helmet on Hank Pym's desk. There is. I that's, love it. That's really cool. I really want that back. Yeah. Other than that... Because the one he has now, it looks a lot like Star Lord's sort of helmet. It's quite similar. It's a, it's a bit boring suit, isn't it? But I think in 2019, can you really have Paul Rudd running around in the original Ant Man helmet? He'd look like a right weirdo. You'd need an excuse to do, and you? you'd have to put him in the past or something. Which oh, I was going to spoil Endgame then. I'm no spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers for Endgame. <laughs> we'll do, we'll um, do a spoiler review. If you if you could direct one MCU film, who 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 would you adapt? One that's been made already. No, if you were going to create a new <laughs> That'd one, that'd be pointless. <laughs> no, if you were going, if you were going, if you were going, if if, the, if you were going brought on to create a new MCU film, which which character do you think you'd adapt? Um, are we talking characters that haven't appeared? Yeah. Or characters that have appeared and don't have their own film, smaller characters. How about we do both? Both. Okay. Okay. Well, I wish I could make a Hulk film. Okay. But even Marvel can't do that. Well, it's because Paramount won't let them. Uh, Universal. Universal, not Paramount. Yeah. Yeah. And Sorry, that's Paramount. the dumbest that. move ever. I mean, <laughs> Sony clearly made the right decision. They should learn learn something from that. They'll make so more gonna, money off that. If you were gonna if you were gonna make a Hulk film, what would you do with it? Undecided, but I, I think it would have to be pretty scary. Would you go darker, more, more it, horror? I don't. Yeah, elements of horror, but would you just remake the PS2 game Hulk Ultimate Destruction, but on film? I don't know. Is that good? <laughs> Maybe. Would that be good? There was a cheat code to make Hulk wear Union Jack pants. 
If that's... Then yes. Yes. Yes, that's how I always imagined Hulk. <laughs> With Union Jack pants. <laughs> A cockney. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Hulk smash, you know what I'm saying? Basically, Tommy Robinson on a bad day. Okay. <laughs> Which is every day, it seems, at the moment. Yeah, so so a Hulk movie. With elements of horror. Imagine the new Joker film. Uh-huh. It's, it is a, a very character-based film. You are following that character rather than his exploits, necessarily. Uh-huh. Things that... Yeah, you, you delve deep into the character. I think Bruce Banner as an actual character can be interesting. Hasn't been yet so far. I mean, Eric Banner was very boring. Mm. Edward Norton, we didn't get enough of that, but that wasn't that kind of film at all you know it was by the books yeah very forgettable marvel in their early days you know not taking that many risks yeah well i think the biggest risk they took was just doing a full movie but we didn't take risks necessarily with the film but the character because they were i remember i heard them say something like they've done iron man now they and they've done hulk and they've done like these earth-based stories now they wanted something so completely opposite to see whether they people would respond with hulk with four with four okay yeah, okay. Yeah. They, 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 they picked, they picked, they picked Iron Man because... People into it. Yeah, they picked Iron Man because he wasn't that well-known. They picked Hulk because... Which is a risk in itself, I love that. Yeah, they picked Hulk because it's Hulk. Yeah. And then they picked Thor because they wanted something so opposite to see if people responded. Okay. And, yeah, that, that film could have been terrible. That, that walked a very fine line between complete nonsense and a very good film. Is this Thor 1? Thor 1, yeah, yeah. the first Thor. Um, and it's a good film but why did they dye his eyebrows and do it all at Dutch angles all Dutch angles two no it's too <laughs> angular it's like nearly 180 degrees like you might as well just film it all on a <laughs> on a smartphone yeah it might as well yeah <laughs> Dutch angles and blonde eyebrows <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what other characters are like I really like Black Bolt you know Black Bolt I don't um, they made an Inhuman series oh okay which did terribly is that on Netflix or Prime it was on ABC. Okay. And this was pretty recent, probably two, three years ago, and it went terribly. Black Bolt looks nothing like the character, but they're basically sort of X-Men. Mm. There is a very popular comic series, and I need to read more comics before I actually make this film, <laughs> if that ever happens. But um, they're, they're interesting characters. So Black Bolt's like the, the captain of a team of about five. Okay. I had the guy from Misfits in Game of Thrones. Uh-huh. The um the quiet one from Misfits. Have you watched Misfits? No, but I'm gonna oh. let you, I'm gonna let you carry on. Okay. I was gonna say the really evil one in Game of Thrones, but at least like half of the cast. <laughs> <laughs> um, Black Bolt's a completely silent character because if he speaks then people will die because his voice nice. sends out uh, a projection. I don't know That's an what interesting concept. proper name for it is. But yeah, yeah, exactly. And he can fly and he has telekinesis. <laughs> like oh, also he can fly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that might be part of the telekinesis. I think they they came from having lots of experiments done on them. Okay. There's a a huge dog, basically a bulldog. Oh no, teleports. I know, I know, I know of that dog. Because you in just the, know the dog. Yeah, but because <laughs> in the Spider-Man PS4 game, oh, okay, they couldn't get. So there's like a in New York, there's a big statue of like a, of a bull, somewhere. Okay. And they couldn't get the rights. To, Wall Street. Maybe. But they couldn't get the rights to the the image rights for that bull statue. So yeah, okay. in the game, where the bull statue is, it's, it's a statue of the dog from Inhumans. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that series bombed. What they were gonna do? They were gonna make a film and have Vin Diesel as Black Bolt because they thought he have, didn't get Groot. enough chance with Groot to have... do to do anything. Yeah, because he has one line. I'm Groot. I mean, he does record them each time. I'm Groot with. Yeah, please don't do that for the whole podcast. Angry. <laughs> um, so they said they'll they'll have him as Black Bolt in the film, have him as another character who can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> Just stands there looking. Some more to do with a mask of wrist <laughs> Can he like make noise or can he go like? Rrr? Is that it? Or? I think that's too dangerous. Ooh. What if he gets hit? Can he not go like? Ooh, or is that like? Ah, uh, yeah. See, this is one of the questions I had. I don't know. Like, Obviously, what that's are the not rules? a problem in the comics because what they don't the they don't have speech bubbles that say "ooh." <laughs> <laughs> they just have "fwap," "fwap," and, <laughs> and yeah. "kachow." In in the forties, they did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> "Fwap." <laughs> <laughs> but 
I got really excited because Batman and Robin is on Prime, the um, the TV series. But it turns out it's not the Adam West one. It's something from the late forties in black and white, which seems horrible to watch. What What would you make? Would I make? Yeah. What, what characters Car- do you like? You've read more comics than me, I think. I don't know if I have. You own a comic. That's that's more than I have. <laughs> I, I just think... borrow mine off people. Oh, can I borrow your comics? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like. I'd love to see Miles Morales in the MCU, but I think they're gonna do that anyway. I th- well, I thought that until Spider Verse came out. But then part of me was like, are they making Spider Verse to sort of tread the waters to see people respond to Miles as a character to then introduce me to the MCU instead of Peter Parker? I, yeah. Because Aaron I, Davis I is in the MCU. I don't know how much say Sony have over the Marvel universe. I don't think it's much. Well, Spider Man's only on loan. Yeah, but I will have free creative reign over it, pretty mm. much. Do you know what I would make? I would make what Sony wanted to make. I might still do. I'd make a Sinister Six movie. Okay, yeah. Yeah, after Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah. Well, no, because I always... And one, obviously. I really like Scorpion. Do you? As a villain, yeah. Why? I think it's because he was in a PS1 game that I played back when I was a kid, <laughs> where you had to, like... he. It was this really weird level where you get a cutscene of him breaking into Jameson's house and then you have to swing to Jameson's house to save him and there's like a little bar at the top of Scorpion's head getting close to Jameson's head but it's like it takes five minutes to get to his house I'm like how is it taking Scorpion five minutes to get from one end of the room to the other is he very slow maybe is he notoriously slow I mean he's got like he's got like a massive Scorpion's tail hanging out his back that I've seen yeah yeah in the MCU Scorpion is played by Michael Mando who is vast in Far Cry 3 yeah Yeah. he needs more I well, he doesn't look like he's going to be in the second one, but if they make, I a... don't think he will. They are making a third, but it... they had him at the end in the post credit scene. Yeah, and he met Vulture in in prison. Yeah, I would I'm love them really to. Really like... hoping that comes into. I'd love them to do that, like the universe. have Scorpion, have Vulture, because the Sinister Six is usually Scorp- Scorpion, Vulture, Electro. They have. Is Morbius in there? No, Rhino's in there. Okay. And then I in don't the P- think they'll do Rhino after in the, last time. In the PS4 game, it was Doc Ock and Mr. Negative. Okay. Mr. Negative, the guy who's like black with white hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I'd, I'd definitely do that. But I, I remember I heard that the, the ideas behind the Sinister Six movie for Sony was they were going to get Spider-Man in there to work reluctantly with them or something. Okay, like a Suicide Squad type thing. Yeah, exactly yeah. like a Suicide Squad type thing. Um... Because that was my issue with Venom, is like, how can you do a Venom movie when Venom, as a character, is so intrinsically linked to Spider-Man? Yeah. And then you do it without Spider-Man They want to build up the villains. I think they've um, well, they cancelled their Black Cat film. Well, wasn't it? It was going to be Black Cat and Silver Sable, but now it's... Silver Sable, But now yeah. it's two separate films where it's Black Cat movie and a Silver Sable movie. Okay. Then they were filming it's Morbius know, in town recently, weren't they? Everyone was around just to see Jared Leto. Yeah. The... As, a, as a... There's going to be a Craven movie? Yeah. That yeah. could be good, but but again, it's like it's like Venom, where the whole point of Craven is that he's hunting Spider-Man. You can't do it if you've not got Spider-Man in the movie. Exactly, and there was no no hint towards Spider-Man and Venom at all. There was a hint towards Carnage. Oh yeah, what a hint! <laughs> <laughs> Very subtle hint towards Carnage. <laughs> I'm gonna be Carnage, he says. <laughs> 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 I really hope they shave his head. In he looks Burst. like Trey. <laughs> he looks like Matt Stone from South Park. <laughs> <laughs> in Spider Verse, there's a hint towards Spider Man 2099 in the post credit. Tw- there is. I missed the post credits because I had to go meet my mum who was watching the. I think she went to see the Lego movie. No, no, she went to see Ralph Breaks the Internet, Wreck It Ralph 2. See, I really enjoyed Wreck It Ralph 1 because of all the video game references. It's good. Wreck It Ralph it's 2. Good film. Wreck It Ralph 2, I think, is a thing that I hate. It's, it's, it seems like it's just for the internet era. Of people, the spicy uh, memes, the yeah, memes and Snapchats and <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with your Snapchats and your vines TikToks. and your Vimeos and your TikTok clocks and your YouTube tubes and your and your book of faces and your <laughs> YouTube's, <laughs> <laughs> your tube tops. And your... <laughs> I feel like I'm getting a love track though. So very off track. Where were we? So you 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 don't describe yourself as a filmmaker yet because you don't think you've earned the title. No, but. Weirdly, I wouldn't describe myself as an adve- an, an event steward, which is what I am. <laughs> okay. Um, so, and when you direct, you take a very loose... So far, I have, yeah. Yeah. With the style of films I've made. So who would you say your style of directing is most similar to? 
Oh wow. Um, There's a question. Well, going off the films I've made, mm-hmm. then you're probably looking at some some lesser known directors, like independent people who go on. Don't write scripts. Okay. How many Korean? Do you know how many Korean? I don't. But continue. Uh, do you know the film Spring Breakers? Maybe. 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 Vanessa Hudgens, James Franco. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's probably his most successful film so far, apart from the new film that he's got coming out. Okay, what's his I've name again? Seen. How many Korean? K-O-R-I-N-E. Okay. Known for being a piece of work. <laughs> okay. You, you should watch his Letterman interviews. They're very funny. He does, does three and then got banned off the show for pushing Meryl Streep. <laughs> oh. His version of the story is slightly different. That's she not fell, what I aspire fell, to be. She fell into my hands, which were doing a false motion. <laughs> <laughs> she fell into my fist, David. <laughs> Obviously, you don't aspire to be pushing Mellow Street. Mellow Street but no. In terms of his style. So, yeah, early on, he made some some weird films. There's a film called Trash Humpers, which is what it sounds like and worse. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I know, I definitely know what sort of metal image I'm getting. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't think we have to relay that to people. No. But I think, yeah, it's, 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 I guess he started off making stuff that's um, not scripted. But, I, okay, have you heard of Mumblecore? No. Mumblecore is a trend of films that was basically set up by a lot of friends. Not, like, consciously set up, but... So, do you know Nick's... What's his name? I want to say Nick Swartz, and that's not right. He's the guy in Adam Sandler films. Nick from New Girl. Nick from New Girl. Jake Johnson. Jake Johnson. Spider Man in Spider Verse. He, he Hobo is. Spider. One of Spider Man. Ho- ho- I just called him Hobo Spider. <laughs> Hobo <laughs> Spider in <laughs> Spider Verse. <laughs> He's um he appears in a lot of these films with different filmmakers. He co-writes some of them, and they're they're films that are they have plots low budget is probably the main the main rule of this mm-hmm. I guess you don't have rules but low budget dialogue based they have plots and you still see stuff happening but say w- the last one I watched is a film called Win It All which is on Netflix starring Jake Johnson mm-hmm. co-written by Jake Johnson directed and... by Jake Johnson produced by Jake Johnson no. edited by Jake no. Johnson <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where he ended it okay wrote Acted, probably produced it. I don't know. He's, he's rich by this point. He was a new girl. And Tag. Watch Tag. Okay. Very funny. Everyone watch Tag. Everybody watch Tag. I want everyone who's Very to have like film. a little notebook and to just make notes of things to check out. You should have had a notebook out already. <laughs> what are you playing? <laughs> what are you doing? Pause this podcast for a second. Go get yourself a notebook. <laughs> and write down Tag. Write down Mumblecore. Write down the other guy whose name I forgot who pushed me on the street. Write down how many Korean if you want. At least watch his Letterman interviews. And if you are ready to watch something that's probably going to disturb you, then start off with Gomo. G U W M O. Start mm-hmm. off with Spring Breakers. That's probably his most accessible film. Start off with High School Musical 4, is what you're saying. Yeah, right. basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Zach Ef- actually, Zach Efron's in his new film. Is he? With Snoop Dogg and Matthew McConaughey. That's not the Ted Bundy one, is it? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Oh, that film looks like a nightmare. <laughs> Everyone's already hating that film, having not seen it. It's not on Netflix in the UK. Is it not? No, it's... Just, just US release? Well, it, I think the rights in the UK belong to Sky and Now TV. Interesting. Mm. I didn't know they had rights to films. Well, apparently. Okay, I knew Sky did, because they make some films now, at least. Which I um, keep with the uh, the competition. <laughs> the compo. I <laughs> keep up to date. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... You, in in Win It All, it's, it's about a, a gambling addict who is given a bag of cash unwillingly to look after. Well, uh, more of an acquaintance than a friend of his is in prison. And it is about technically what he does with that money, but it doesn't focus on that stuff as plot points. It's not like some film about a man breaking down, going broke, because he's basically broke at the start of it jobless gets a job in the film but that's not like a big scene or anything that's a style I like I, I, I'm not set on this but I think I, th- I think most of it is um, 
you will have to edit part of this. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, I th- I think that is probably most most like the kind of stuff I've made. It's not plot based or anything, even though there could be some plot with like with Pizza Time. Okay. That's not the uh, defining factor of the film. It's it's more just a fun film with two weird people going back in time. It's not that that makes sense because if I think back to when we did Artism, which you can watch on YouTube, if you type in Artism A R T I S M. And it's on the channel yeah. Mad Stains. There's a lot on there that is also called Artism, though. Yeah. Because I feel like... You'll see the, the thumbnail is my face with half my face swollen. You'll see that. Okay, yeah. The channel is Mad Stains. Mad Stains with a Z. Yeah. Yeah, so it's called Artism. You can watch it on the channel Mad Stains. Uh, M-A-D space S-T-A-N-N. No. <laughs> all right, start on again. Mad Stains. <laughs> So it's called Artism, uh, A-R-T-I-S-M, and you can watch it on Charlie's channel Mad Stains, which is M-A-D space S-T-A-I-N-Z. Yes. That's also where you can watch it. Pizza Time. Pizza Time's on there. That's the only yeah. other film on there. But um, the point, I guess the point I'm making is that um, that makes sense because with Artism, there isn't really any semblance of plot. It's just yeah a lot of instances yeah. cut together to create a narrative. But there isn't you know necessarily like a strict narrative of you know A to B. I think, middle end. I, I think that's a difference. A lot of filmmakers call themselves storytellers more than anything, and I'm not a storyteller. See, I would describe myself as a storyteller. Would you? Yeah, with, in terms of my theatre and stuff. Why? Have you written stories, mainly? Yeah, I mean, well, yeah you, you are writing a story now, aren't you? Yeah, well, everything I usually write is it has like a, you know, a narrative as a story. Okay. I like to tell... I like to tell stories. Yeah. So would you say you don't like to tell stories? Oh, I don't dislike it. Okay. But going off the films I've made, I'm not a storyteller. I have written stories, obviously. I mean, we did English together. We did. That's the right stories then. Um, no, I can't remember, though. There was at least one. <laughs> I don't remember writing any. I don't remember ever writing a story. I remember having to write a, a horror story, I think. We were given a title, and then we were like, just write a film. Just write something. Just write like a two page story. Oh, was that in second year or first year? I think that was Mr. Perry's class, so first year? Oh. Because all I remember from English is doing the exam and then having to uh, dissect an article about City Winger League written by a writer that I hmm. already uh, read and then tweeting going, I just dissected your, your writing. He's like, oh, I hope you passed. You I did. tweet him. Or did you just do that? No, I, t- I just tweeted him after going, at man. He replied to you though. He did. That's nice. Yeah. I like it when that happens. I think he actually works for City now. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were talking about like a footballer. No. <laughs> I reply. I tweeted the writer of the article that I had to dissect for the exam. Ah, because because I I I turned the page and I saw it was about City and I was like, nice. And I saw written by Rob Pollard and I was like, I know Rob Pollard. <laughs> so I was excited. But um, but no, right. So back so, to you. So when when we when we sat down, it, when we sat down to talk about artism before we'd had the actual film together, my my idea was that um, I don't know if you remember this. My idea was that. I want to make a film that shows how dumb artists are and how annoying they are. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about you specifically, but take it that way if you want. Learn from it. And move on. All right. Change yourself is what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. That's uh, <laughs> that's the last ever podcast. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I I wanted to make a film about an artist who was basically the image of hipster people who get too involved in their work, take themselves too seriously. Okay. So that could have ended up if 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 I was very focused on that idea itself and getting that across in the film, basically just preaching to people, then that could have just come out as a completely different film, a very serious film with a very different character. I would have actually had to write a script. So would you say you don't you... different would you say then that you don't take yourself too seriously? I don't take myself seriously at all. Apart from, I will get annoyed when people don't take me seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important to not take yourself too seriously, right? A hundred percent. Life's too short. That's my point. So Starring I don't want to make Davis. a very serious film because, fair enough, that's a short film. But if I'm making a feature length film, that's ninety minutes of someone's time. I'm not. I don't want to make a very depressing, serious film preaching to them. Why not have fun with it? You can get the same message across with most things and have a lot of fun with it. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. What I've noticed about this sort of like, I guess you would call it an interview. We've, we've been very sort of like erratic 
Hmm. She's been like, point, point, sort of semblance of a question. It's how my brain works. And I think that's... I, I, think that's I don't have much focus. I think that's interesting in itself. I think that because... does relate to wanting to have fun while I was watching films, because I don't have much focus. I want to keep engaged with the film. Yeah, and I feel, I feel like that's quite... That's quite interesting that that's what's happened because, I mean, like I say, you don't you don't normally write things with a with a plot. You just sort of like you like to take a sort of laid back, yeah, hands off approach. Yeah, you don't take yourself too seriously. And if there is a plot, I have room for maneuver. Yeah, and I think maneuvering. The fact that this interview has been so sort of erratic, I think, really sort of like lends itself to the way that you make your films. I think that's interesting itself. So people listening can get an idea of who you are as a as a as a filmmaker even if you don't like to describe yourself as such is that the truest form of art your films reflecting you as a person i don't know i don't know either if you made if you made autobiographic work i think yeah yeah if i did it would be like semi-autobiographical would it be like the upcoming out on john film where it's sort of based on you but it's not really. I hope not. I've not seen it, but I hope it's not like Rocket Man. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, in the sense of like the fact that with Rocket Man, it's not just a, a bog standard biopic. It's like is it not? It's based around Elton John, but it's more fan more fantasy. Okay. So would you want that yeah. where it's sort of like sort it's of semi autobiographical, but it's also a bit Hunter S. Thompson esque? You know, uh, do you know Fear and Loathing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sort of thing. You, where you, you don't really know what part of it is true, but you're capturing the essence of the character. Because me to myself, if I if I want to portray my version of myself, that's not just everything I've done. There's more to it than that. Mm. Obviously, you, you're limited by having to show that in a few scenes. But well, hopefully, there's more than a few. Yeah, a, f- a couple of a few, <laughs> <laughs> a dozen maybe. Um. But yeah, that that's why uh, biopic films really bore me. Okay. Most of the time, I think if you're gonna do it, did you either watch... make it completely factual or be very outright that you are not making a true story? Did you watch Bohemian Rhapsody? No. No. It looks horrible. <laughs> I know it definitely makes a few p- things up. Yeah, does it? Yeah. Have you watched it? Mm-hmm. What does it make up? Do you know? How Freddie Met the Band. Right. So how... I've started fact checking biopics or any true story films now. It, it makes up how Freddie Met the Band. It makes up. How Freddie came back to the band after his solo career. Yeah. It takes liberties with how they approached Live Aid. Um, a lot of the main points. This is what annoys me. Yeah, I mean, the three most important things are how he got in the band, how he came back to the band, yeah. and Live Aid, and they're all sort of like massaged. So, why make the film? That's what annoys me. It's just money grabbing. Songs. Yeah, because songs. Because <laughs> <laughs> songs. <laughs> it would it have won Best Picture if there wasn't the whole director scandal. Probably would have done actually, yeah. Hundred percent. What did win? It was Green Book, right? Green Book, yeah. Which I haven't seen, but it looked good. Looks all right, yeah. It just looks like driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Spike Lee say like, "Oh, whenever I um, whenever someone drives somewhere, I always lose." Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I didn't see that. Because he lost to Green I did Book, see and he him lost. Talking about Green Book, though. He lost to Green Book, and he lost. He lost to driving Miss Daisy. And he was like, <laughs> he's like, whenever someone drives somewhere, oh, I yeah. lose. Yeah, that was the same year as Do the Right Thing, actually, yeah. Because Black Klansman was amazing. Have you watched it? Yeah. I've not, I need to see it. I really want to. Amazing. And it probably deserved to win more things. Also, true story. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm assuming quite, quite, um, quite factual. Powerful as well. Is it? Yeah. Plus Adam Driver. Adam Driver was Topher great. Grace is back and bigger than ever. And he's not Venom. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I have missed Topher Grace. I think that ruined him for a bit. What Venom? Yeah, probably. And he just wasn't right for Eddie Brock. No, not at all. No. no. Well, Sam Raimi didn't want to do Venom. He was forced to put Venom in the movie. That is not his film, really. No. And Spider-Man Four sounds like it was going to be good. It was going to be set a bit more in the future. There was going to be like do a you little know what characters they had going. Yeah. So there was going to be there was going to be like a sort of montage at the start of him putting away sort of lower level villains, including. Mysterio, who was going to be played by Bruce Campbell. Yes, yes, I forgot about that. Which would no, be amazing. I'm so annoyed that wasn't made. And then I think the main that works perfectly because he pops up in the other yeah. three films. Because the the whole theory was that because obviously um, Mysterio, his character Mysterio is, is, an Quentin, actor. is Quentin Beck, and he's like yeah. a special effects artist, but he's like a, he's a failed actor. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, and then so the goes idea into was special effects. He so if you look at Bruce Campbell's arc for the Spider-Man films, he starts out as a wrestling announcer, trying to make it big, fails, becomes an usher, pops up in these really annoying <laughs> moments with yeah. Spider-Man, fails, becomes an usher, fail, leaves being an usher, just ends up working in a restaurant, putting on an accent, <laughs> and then he becomes Mysterio. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing. It would, but I think the main two were going to be it was going to be Vulture, okay, and it was going to be Black Cat. But it was gonna be it was gonna be Felicia Hardy, but not as Black Cat, but as a vultureess. Is that Black Cat Felicia Hardy? That's yeah. not an actress. No, Felicia Hardy is a character. Okay. Yeah, but it, she wasn't gonna be Black Cat. She was gonna be vultureess. Mm-hmm. No, I don't like that. Yeah, I'd rather just be Black Cat. Yeah, just why? Why would you bother? Like, if you have you have a vulture already, you want two vultures. No. Plus, Black Black Cat plays that sort of you know anti-hero role quite well. Where she's both. I know nothing about Black Cat. Well, she's a villain, but she's also. She has relations with 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 old Spider. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, exactly. That's when he became Spider Man. <laughs> All right, <laughs> keep that in. <laughs> <laughs> End it there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. Know, how did we get onto Spider Man? It just happens. It just happens. Um, oh, Black Handsman, Tofa Grace, Spider Man. Okay. Can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna circle interview with Spike Lee. <laughs> Yeah, Saying I'm gonna. Green I'm gonna... Book wasn't his cup of tea. <laughs> Tried to do it in a British accent, cackling, running around McCarthy. It's very funny. So I'm gonna circle back. Something that's interesting about you is that you have always said to me that you don't have influences. Right. So when I think back, I have influences. So in terms of my theatre, I'm influenced by Blasphemy and by Brecht. In the way that I act, I'm very much influenced by David Tennant. So, and when you see me act, it is just I'm just a fat David Tennant. And you are you constantly aware of that? Is it a conscious decision? I think because David Tennant inf- inspired me to act, I just he was the reason you wanted to get into acting. Yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. I just unconsciously but naturally assimilated him. Okay. And now sometimes when I act, I notice I notice that I'm being quite tenth Doctor esque. Yeah. Whether I mean to or not. Okay. That's interesting, actually. So, do you, do you ne- never not, do you ever like notice that you are making something similar to someone else, whether you mean to or not? Yeah, you're taking on certain characteristics of someone's practice. Yeah, definitely. But I only have one example. I think Go right on. now with artism, mm-hmm. there's um, there are two scenes. I think two shots where you are. Making some very strange noises. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm warming up. Warming up, yeah, doing your vocal exercises. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why a painter needs to do vocal exercises, but he does. <laughs> there are, yeah, there are two scenes in that, at least... Because well, there's, there's, the la- the, there's the vocal exercise and there's the yoga. Yeah, yeah, there's the yoga as well. That's Yeah, that's just dispersed throughout the film. Mm. Um, I like that, where... sort of like transitions between scenes where it's just like a little aside that means nothing, but it's there. Oh yeah, it's like putting it in. Yeah, we we have the yoga in it before you explain that you do yoga. It's just you doing weird, <laughs> weird stuff in a room. Then there's, no, there's, there's, a, there's a shot of me riding a su- scooter across a hedge, but he sees my head. <laughs> Why is that shot in it? I don't know. We don't mention a scooter at all. <laughs> just work with what but you've got, you know. <laughs> but it's character work. They right? say write what you know, and I know scooters, and apparently you don't. <laughs> I hadn't been a scooter in years. I was really. You have no. I've never seen someone that inept at riding a scooter. <laughs> um, That's why it was perfect. But no. But I think what's nice about those shots is that they they do more for sort of establishing the character than anything that we That's what verbally I say. That's why I love. Man, it's it's the idea we did this in A level film studies. The idea of pure cinema. Okay. Where. The essence of it is that it's something that you can't see anywhere other than in a film. Okay. So, basically no dialogue. You're getting a story across through music and images, basically. I love that. It's, love it's that. beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You can't have that anywhere else. There was a lot of that in my Mishima piece in yeah, September. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of that. In fact, um, didn't you, didn't you t- talk to me about it during the collaboration about... You said probably. About yeah. yeah, probably. And I think I mentioned it in the essay. But anyway, carry on, sorry. Yeah, otherwise there would just be no point making the film, would there? Hmm. Write a book. <laughs> <laughs> Write a book, man. Write a book or something. It's easier. <laughs> it's much cheaper to do. Um, what 
what were we talking about before that? I'm not saying, do you ever notice yourself? Yeah, okay, yeah. So right, sort of assimilating a... other, Go... other directors sort of practicing your own without realising. So there are never any filmmakers I have in mind when I'm making a film, but there are points points where it is clearly inspired by something that I've watched, but usually not like famous films, nothing that's stuck with me loads. There was um, at least one shot where I think it's during your vocal exercises where it gets um, a bit too loud, you know, it builds up a bit. That was just the way you did it and it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> small, small quick noises and then uh, I think one shot is basically you just screaming at the end of it. Yeah, there's the scene there's a scene where you're doing your vocal exercises and you're uh, get, getting into the uh, the weirder noises, as, as it were, easing easy us in. And then uh, there's, by the end of it, you're basically screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Head back on the sofa, <laughs> basically screaming. And it cuts off halfway through the sound. And that is basically ripped straight from It's Always Sunny. Have you you've watched It's Always Sunny? Yeah, I just, finished, I just finished season 13. Oh, nice. Yeah. Gets bad. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, the the episode where they win something on the radio, they win a prize to be the people who um, shoot the first puck in ice hockey. Remember that one? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At the, the very start of that, the, the first scene in that, they they win and Charlie just screams <laughs> <laughs> like full full volume screams, and then mid scream it's probably like two seconds of the scream he's clearly gone gone on for another 10 <laughs> seconds but they just cut it with the theme tune straight away <laughs> i think that's where we put just put the credits <laughs> yeah <laughs> that scene alone sums up the vibe of the film <laughs> like no n- no excuses like we're, we're unapologetic i mean okay it's just you screaming at the end of the <laughs> credits like you might as well have just watched that scene and you will have learned just as much from the rest of the film <laughs> So that's as far as influences go, really. But I, I spent like from from about the age of twelve and thirteen just watching all the films I can. Okay. Films mainly. I probably watch a lot more TV now because that's where it's at. That's just where things are. Mm-hmm. Don't limit yourself to films. People watch a lot more TV now because mm. it's better right and, now. And TV is better than film. And with at risk of sounding like I'm forty five years old, with binge culture. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> people just watch a lot of TV. Exactly. Because people's attention span is horrible because of the internet. Yeah. <laughs> probably. That's I, probably I'll, a generalisation. I'll, generalize, I'll generalize find myself watching but... a film at home when I'm just like, I'm on Twitter. Yeah, exactly. And I do that all the time. People are always shocked when I say that. Except for Osmosis Jones, that had my full attention. I was I was drawn to that. <laughs> it's very... Um, they get the science down very well. It's re- It makes me feel sick, they though. They not go into that many deep... Oh, yeah, parts of it. I, I got more comfortable as I went along. Yeah. I think it was right at the start when you see Bill Murray eat an egg hmm. and it's just on his mouth and it's like <laughs> ah. when he eats the oyster as well yeah or when he's got chicken on his tongue oh no the, the zit scene's the worst no I did look away for that ah. I did look away for that I couldn't <laughs> I tried <laughs> I couldn't I wanted to see what happened and it kept dragging out <laughs> oh no what I love about that film is they don't interact he doesn't meet Bill Murray or anything no what? that any other filmmaker would have done that what, where, where, the... where Bill Murray meets a white blood cell. Yeah. Any other <laughs> film, especially that area of kids that that era of kids film, they they would have any you know lesser filmmaker. Do you know what I would have liked to see? At the end, Osmosis Jones, he he falls out of Bill Murray. Yeah. And he's in the hospital. Of not with. Just just so it's <laughs> oh, yeah, he falls out of Bill Murray. <laughs> not falls out with you Bill Murray. You can't fill out with fall out with Bill Murray. <laughs> no, but he falls out of Bill Murray. And He's hanging onto the false eyelash of Bill Murray's daughter. Yeah. I would have liked to... Because he was like saying, he's like, oh, I'm trapped. I need to get back. But I would have liked to have seen him. Like, because obviously the, the whole point is like in Bill Murray, there's a whole city. Right? Yeah. And I'd like to have seen him go to the daughter's inner city, which is the best way I think I can describe how <laughs> sounding weird. <laughs> You're on <laughs> the risky ground there. Yeah. But like, I would have liked to have seen, does is each person have like, does it look exactly the same or is each person have different sort of oh, okay, I get you. civilians and different sort of buildings and does it look different in different people but I guess it would have cost more money and the film do, was ending do her, do her white blood cells yeah. have the voices of famous African American actors as well <laughs> maybe I don't know <laughs> but I think I probably would have been too expensive and it was the end of the movie anyway. probably yeah they, they went for some cheap animation though didn't they would you do an Cheaper. animated film 
Yeah, why not? What sort of animated film would you do? Pitch me an animated movie. Well, I don't know about film, actually, but I watch a lot of cartoons. South Park, obviously. Um, Aquatine and Hunger Force. Mainly because Bojack it's Horseman. good for attention span. Bojack Horseman. Yeah, 100%. I'd love to make a show like that. Mm-hmm. But I'd need a team of writers. I don't have enough jokes. <laughs> Stuff like that it is a lot of set-up jokes. Yeah. Obviously, you, you get the ball rolling by having actual fleshed-out characters. Yeah. But... So obviously Bojack Horseman touches on sort of themes of mental health and yeah and relevancy and you know out of work actors and struggling with only that sort of stuff. cartoon I've really seen do that yeah is there in that sense is there a certain theme that you want to make a film about or are you not really about themes as of yet no but I, I like the idea of a theme as, as I said going off um artism not focusing on the actual message too much mm-hmm. rather just focusing on enjoy yourself here's the vibe of the film films are a lot about vibes you could have a very well written film if the vibes not fleshed out properly then it could be horrible you need to draw a very fine line there but um no there's no there's no specific theme i like um i'd like to get messages messages across sometimes other than that i think i just I'd rather just make a lot of different things. Do you feel like you would only want to make a film that has a message if you actually had a message to give? You wouldn't want to force. Oh yeah, don't force a message. Yeah, no. yeah. And if it actually mattered, a lot of films repeat the same messages. Because I sort of, I feel like I want to echo what you're saying. Because when I came out of the MA, for a long time I really struggled with thinking about what to make next. Yeah. And also, throughout the MA and throughout sort of, you know, institutional making you know, that our university or whatever. I always felt like you had to make something that meant something, that had something to say, that yeah. tackled something. You could never just make something for the fun of it. Yeah. And I I, I, I sort of echo what you said. Sometimes I just want to make something that's just fun. Yeah. And I remember I, I, was, I was at a, um, a seminar with Zoe Roberts of Kill the Beast. It's a theatre company. I don't think you'll know them. but don't think so, no. But she was saying everyone makes for different reasons sometimes people have something to say sometimes people just want to have fun because especially in today's climate sometimes people just want a bit of escapism and just want to go watch something that's just fun and I was like that's exactly what I want I just want people to have fun with what I make yeah well um, do you know Paul Thomas Anderson yeah for people who don't know him he is the greatest living filmmaker greatest working filmmaker at least because some of them are still alive I mean I think he discounted Jerry Seinfeld from B-Movie but, uh... Ooh. Ooh, that's a sweeping <laughs> statement sorry okay so Paul Thomas Anderson is a filmmaker <laughs> he is one of the filmmakers who's alive <laughs> it's not to be too risky right, so carry on he um, makes a film like There Will Be Blood is probably his most famous film that's it's the milkshake just, one that's the milkshake one yeah. Daniel Day Lewis likes milkshakes <laughs> <laughs> he drinks it up <laughs> he drinks milkshakes for two and a half hours <laughs> It's St. Archie's. It's in town. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I'm, no, I'm going to end up screaming that in Archie's now. I can't <laughs> even drink milkshakes. <laughs> no, you've ruined me. <laughs> Go on, continue, continue, continue. Um, Paul Thomas Anderson, he makes the, the greatest films ever made probably right now and has been doing so for at least 20 years. But he said... That when when he sits down to watch a film, he's always just gonna go for the easy watch. Ninety percent of the time, he's just gonna go for the easy watch. No, that's. I mean, that's that's true because just to jump off that, like sometimes when I'm at home and I want to watch a, I want to watch a film. Yeah. I would much rather watch something just easy to take rather than something where I've got to invest and be intense. Exactly. But Even if, if it's I, one of those films you've had on your shelf for years that if you've I look not ac- seen. If I look across to my shelf now, where I love my Blu-rays. Let's have a look. I would much if I even though. I would much rather just sit down and watch Lego Batman than Get Out because it's just a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah, you've got these films that are always um, classed as the greatest films ever made that you just never got around to. Because you just what can't you, be asked. What are you, really, you going to watch? Bridge on the River, River Kwai or... I thought you were say Bridge to Serapithia. No, don't watch that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good film. Is it? I, probably, I think I saw it when it came out. It was a long time ago. Dies. Spoilers. <laughs> Is Paul Rudd in that one? No. What am I? Oh, I'm thinking of Pets being a wallflower. 
Yes. He's in that one and not enough. Should have been a film about Paul Rudd. He's 50 years Should've old. Should have been Ant Man. <laughs> he's 50 years old. What? Yeah. And he's only just got ripped. <laughs> <laughs> Life does start at 40. <laughs> Paul Thomas Anderson. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, that is basically the quote from him, but he makes some of the deepest films with ridiculous number of layers to them. Not so like he, straight up, here's the message of the film. So he makes the exact opposite of what he would watch? Most of the time, yes. Okay. He does have a lot of elements of comedy. Two films that are classed as comedies, but obviously with his own independent style to it and more going on with this plot. And it's hard to describe his filmmaking technique because he has a lot of variety with what he does. He's like me, just gets bored. Okay. Tries to challenge himself. I mean, his latest film is nothing like the rest of what he's made, and that's probably true every time he brings out a new film. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. Would you rather watch Bridge on the Road of Choir having not seen it, or would you rather watch Grown Ups 2? I mean, I would never watch Grown Ups 2. But I've seen it. Which, I don't know, it, I, I still have more fun with that than Bridge on the Road of Choir, even though Grown Ups 2 is a pathetic film. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bridge on the River Choir is a classic and still very good. I'm not gonna, I'm not saying all classics are good. But I guess if you sat me down now and you said, w- do you want to watch, like, do you want to watch Get Out for the first time or do you want to watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine for the 16th time? Which would you pick? I'm probably going to pick Brooklyn. I think it depends which season. But <laughs> The latest one, because it's amazing. Season 5. Really? Season 5 oh, is the best disagree. season. Is it season 6 now? Yeah. Not a big fan. Season 6 is the one that's premiering now like yeah yeah i've season... been watching it i'm not a big fan i've i mean i think it's it i mean season five is the best one i think we've got to the point where they've gone with basically everything's the same style each joke feels like a copy of their older stuff it just feels like a loose callback that could just be me maybe i'm done with the show but i still enjoy the older ones okay same thing happened with family guy yeah, Simpsons. Simpsons, hundred percent. Yeah, si- uh, I, I just don't watch the new ones. No, I won't watch. It's past really, season thirteen. It's really weird because when when you sit down to watch Simpsons on Sky One or Channel Four or whatever, yeah, you watch it and you instantly know, it's it's really upsetting in the sense that the worse it looks, the better it's going to be. Yeah, so, as soon as you're like, oh, this looks really good, it's going to be terrible. Apart from season one, I think from season two and three, it gets into the peak. Yeah, <laughs> for a long time. For a long, for like it's another ten peak. years. It's a big peak. <laughs> well, in, we're talking about the peak. It's probably about five to eight seasons. Five to eight. Out of five we're talking like Who Shot Mr. Burns era. Yeah, yeah. I think I've seen season six too much because that's the only DVD I had. <laughs> I think I've got two box uh, box sets over there. I think they're seasons. I want to say season eight, and I want to say season five. Okay. Yeah. Well, good good box sets. Never yeah. get rid of those. Yeah. Well, apart from when DVDs become obsolete, I've heard rumours that when Disney Plus launches, all of the Simpsons will be on it. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Does well, that mean they'll be off Channel Four? I think so. If it, I mean, eventually TV will die anyway. There'll I be think, no TV. Well, actual expand. TV expand like straight up. I have a Skybox. That that's just gonna go. It's It'll just gonna be streaming, streaming services. Okay. But what if you have a shoddy internet connection? Then. Tough. Your TV connection is probably bad as well. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay, not okay. true, is it? No, it's not. No. I think it was back in the day. I don't know. Because I can sit here and I can download a video game for two days straight, but I can still go in the, in the front room and watch okay. football live and it's not going to buffer. I'm not saying, don't hold me to this. <laughs> don't don't come up to me in 20 years and say, TV's still about, and then remind me every year after. <laughs> Wait, TV, you dick. <laughs> <laughs> But, I, yeah, I just think at least the nice, viewings are going to drop Nice completely. prediction that podcast no one listened to. <laughs> <laughs> but even with, with stuff on... I, I never watch stuff while it's on TV. Unless it's The Chase. <laughs> 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 no, but, like, I'll, I'll notice that, like, I... I hate having... I, I don't like knowing I have to be somewhere at a certain time to watch it. Precisely. So, to use Brooklyn Nine-Nine's example... The other night I was in here and it was 10 to 9 and I know that Brooklyn Nine-Nine is on at 9 o'clock on E4. Okay, yeah. But I was like, I don't, I can't, I'll just watch it on 4OD tomorrow when I feel like Without it. Without adverts. Uh, no, 4OD has adverts. There's more adverts, if anything. It really fluctuates on 4OD, doesn't it? Yeah. But like, 
But yeah, but when when Alan Partridge was on BBC One earlier in the year, yeah, yeah, it's like I could sit and watch it at nine o'clock, or I could just do whatever else I'm doing and then exactly. watch it tomorrow just morning. Record them or watch it on iPlayer. Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't watch it one of those while it was on, but I watched them all. I think my favourite method of watching is the way that the last season of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend released on Netflix. I don't know what that is. So is that, that Uma Thurman film? No. So, <laughs> with, so you, you, there's my three... Super Ex-Girlfriend. <laughs> there's three ways to watch things, right? You can either watch them live on TV at the moment they, they go out. Yeah. You can binge it on Netflix. Or... Netflix can release them one at a time every week and then you can watch it when you're ready. When I it's like out. that. I like that. That's my favourite. That's mine. What I like as well is that Netflix seems to have um, shortened seasons down from 13 to 10, 8 to 10 episodes, which is perfect. Mm-hmm. That is the perfect number of episodes. Because British shows tend to do six. Usually, yeah. Which yeah. is a little short. It's a bit too short. Like you think. I'd say 10 is the perfect sort of number. Say like 40 Towers, one of the most classic comedy shows of all time and ridiculously popular could have kept going that has fewer episodes than one season of friends that is half of a season of friends yeah don't some tv shows have like 24 24 episodes yeah usually around 22 yeah it's just comedy shows at least it's just like ah i Mm. can't parks and recreation is the same yeah but that's great so i don't mind bingeable yeah very bingeable and i'm bad at binging things i I always surprise you though when sometimes like when well, Always Sunny was at 13 when it went down to 10. Yeah. Parks and Rec was at 6 and it went up to 24 and it went down to it's 18. It's different with comedy stuff. Partly because it's easier to watch, but partly because the episodes are about 20 minutes. Depends. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend 20 is like 45 minutes. minutes. Okay. And what are they up? How many episodes? Fluctuates. The last season was at 16. And, compa- as in, and their other seasons, I mean? They've been as high as 20, as low as 10. That really fluctuates then. Okay. Yeah. So they're basically just doing what they want. I can check for you right now. <laughs> Or is that going off use? I don't know. I don't know if that goes off popularity. I mean, it, but I think they learned it's that finished with now. Marvel, their Netflix stuff learned that having done Daredevil, Jessica Jones, and the others, all thirteen episodes a season, mm-hmm. it's long, and you feel about the eight nine episode mark that they are just trying to fill in the time. There's a lot of. What is this? Uh, I'm just checking how many episodes. Okay. There are. But yeah, there's a lot of like pointless stretching out of stuff, and you're watching about two episodes. So it is two hours, pretty much. Probably about seventy minutes, seven, seventy, eighty minutes. Hmm. That's two episodes, and you just don't need it there. So what's the point? And then we, when they brought Defenders out, it was eight episodes. Season one of Creator's Girlfriend was eighteen episodes. Oh. Season two. 45 minutes as well that's too long for me yeah. season yeah. 2 is 13 season 3 is 13 and then season 4 is 13 let's do the maths of that 18 episodes you say yeah times 45 that is just over 8 hours which is too long too long that's like the Godfather series that's not even the Godfather series it's that one season of whatever this show is <laughs> <laughs> it's a good show I'd recommend it but you've already put me off well because it's the too long the one season is 8 hours over 8 hours do it in a day long day <laughs> i got stuff to do <laughs> so we've been coding for well over an hour now yeah it felt like it I'm gonna I had one final question though and I've forgotten what it is what would you do in a zombie apocalypse that wasn't it oh I'm gonna edit that now. I, wanna, I had a question. I wanna. I can't remember what it was. Because we've done your sort of influence. We've done what you wanna. Um... Don't ask what's next. What's no. next? With Charlie Garson. What's next? Ah, <laughs> oh, I had a one final question. I can't remember what it was. That question is. What is it that you love about filmmaking? Like why? Because you because you said that you just spent all your time as a kid just watching every movie you could. What is it that made you want to? Every movie be a filmmaker I could and every movie I should <laughs> yeah so what is it that made you want to be a filmmaker what is it that you love well about I films? started off with acting mm-hmm. did GCSE drama sort of did an A level <laughs> drama I got one we were in the same class we were that's how we met um but yeah so around that time when, when I started getting into enjoying acting I think it was about year 
year nine, I think, just before GCSE. And I, I loved it. And then I got very bored of it around college. I don't know if the course put me off. Okay. The second year, I hated. There was barely any acting. But I'm not an actor. I've never really been an actor. I used to be good, good enough. Do you remember when they took so us to see was... Romeo and Juliet, but it was like an updated gangster version? That was horrible. And it was oh. like... Romeo, Romeo, where you at, fam? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Dizzle. <laughs> <laughs> when he went to the masquerade ball, he wore a Spider-Man mask and a green hoodie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the only image I have of it. Just a Spider-Man mask. And then there was like a school there who like was just shouting and chatting and then there was like in the middle of the play. In front of us. Someone stood up and was like, Paige picking me up, man. Raz. And there were like out. two schools in the whole theatre. Mm. <laughs> like five rows in front of us taking up the whole thing screaming through it <laughs> I'm glad we were at the back um, yeah started off acting then got really into films I think it's just through certain actors you know where everyone gets into like Johnny Depp when they're young and that yeah or David Tennant for me David Tennant that's a better choice <laughs> well done <laughs> um, I, I, Adam Scott I love I, Adam Scott I do love Adam Scott yeah Yes, not to be confused with the golf player. <laughs> no. As the only one I know, other than Tiger Woods, obviously. The man from Parks and Rec. And also a couple episodes of Party of Five. Which Party of Five? He was in Party Down. I, I'll not explain it now, we'll talk to you about it later. Okay, yeah, <laughs> in our own time. Um, I, I think... My, my, my family have always been into films, my mum specifically. And then she started to notice that I enjoy actual good films. <laughs> so she kind of eased ease me into the films that she knows. Um, I don't mean like sat me down and had lectures. This is the film today. <laughs> this is directed by Steven Spielberg. Here's, here's his filmography. <laughs> what a tune. Um, and then, yeah, it just kind of eased into wanting to be on that side of the camera I, I, I get a lot more out of creating stuff than I do out of performing stuff hmm. there's less stress on it like a lot of what I'm into is comedy but I couldn't do stand up comedy yeah no I'm I terrible at stand up comedy stand up comedy but I think it's too much stress it's I'm completely terrible at different it. once I'm better, have... I'm better at comedy characters than yeah, just myself exactly once you've got that time to flesh it out and obviously you do with stand up acts, but there's always that barrier of getting up on stage for the first time, no matter how much you practice in your room. Yeah. There's always that huge barrier. And then it com- becomes completely different. It becomes addictive for most stand up comedians. Most successful ones anyway. And probably unsuccessful ones. And so that ugh, that ruled that out. But I think yeah, I, I um I I grew up quite shy though, I think. I uh, never wanted to be the centre of attention. Still don't. I never, when I was ever in stuff, doing doing a play in high school, I wasn't a main character, which I, I didn't want. My drama teacher said afterwards we should have should have had you as uh, the main character after we'd done the play. But I was like, no, please, no. I, I clearly got the best character. I had to be the villain, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of the time, the protagonist is the most boring part. Oh, especially. Especially in Guys and Dolls. Yeah, well, we did Bugsy Malone. Oh, yeah. And, um, I know, it is. He's not much of a character, is he? I was Fat Sam. Yes. Which is a lot more fun. Yeah. And then the guy who played Bugsy dropped out. And they wanted me to play Bugsy, but I already knew all the lines for Fat Sam. So they were like, oh, just stay as Fat Sam then. And I was like, yo, Bugsy's boring. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, I'm not really really in the second half, but the bits I am in are fun. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I think... Plus I get this cool hat. But anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Um... I think yeah I think I think it's partly I'm not that interested in anything else apart from music and I, I I'd like to talk about I'd like I mean I'd like to uh, do music I don't want to talk about that <laughs> <laughs> so would you do I'd music like videos do music as well yeah I do music videos definitely a lot of money in that yeah and very good place to start off loads of very successful directors started started off in music videos David Fincher um a lot of other people do you know anyone in a band? Have you ever like considered getting in touch with someone in a band and offering Sister's to? Sister's a musician. Film? You have filmed some music videos, have you? No, nearly. 
Um, you were in a music video first, though. Where, where I need the she. She'd need me to have all the equipment. I don't have any editing software or anything. Okay. But um, yeah, I was. I was in one shot for a music video for some <laughs> reason. She asked me if I could be it. If yeah, if she could put me in it, I said no, and then she put me in it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Why ask me? <laughs> I guess you have to legally. But um, I said part of it. Part of wanting to make films is because it is the best way to get messages across. I mean, everyone watches films. It's um, like compared to music, you listen to the music you want to listen to already. You don't just hear new music unless you keep the radio on. But with films, you're streaming through stuff, you're probably going to say, say it's a, an episode of a series or something. You're probably just going to watch one of them if you've heard about it. So, you've already you've already got some sort of audience there. It's the best way to get out there, really. I think. Whether you want to get a message across or not, but it is also the best way to get a message across, because you're reaching the most people at once, rather than writing a book or becoming a politician. <laughs> films is definitely the best way to get out there. Cool. Whether they know the name of the director or not, they don't need to, and I'd like that. I'd like to make very famous films and not and have people not know my name that's quite admirable no it's I think it's I think I just hate people <laughs> also fair <laughs> right well I think unless you have anything else you want to talk about I think we're pretty much wrapped up I don't think so let's do Scooby Doo commentary now <laughs> <clears throat> you really want to watch Scooby Doo 2 Monsters it's, Unleashed that's what I came for did you not try and watch it I watched like half of it the other week and I couldn't finish it. Oh, is it that bad? I don't think I've ever watched the whole thing. I watched it in the cinema when I was a kid. It, oh, no, like 2004, 2006, I think that one was. Because I think I got the first one on VHS for Christmas one time. <laughs> and then I saw the second one in the, in the, in the cinema. <laughs> Unfortunately. What a waste. What's the worst thing you've seen in the cinema? The worst thing is the Keith Lemon film. You saw that in the cinema? My mum and sister dragged me. I was like, no, I already don't like Keith Lemon. <laughs> like, it'll be fun. It'll be a laugh. Stop, 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 being, mo- stop being a mope, little bastard. <laughs> I think mine... They hated it. They both hated it. I saw about seven minutes of it on ITV2, and I was just like, this is upsetting for me. Seven minutes? That is too long. <laughs> I'm so think, sorry you had to go through that. <laughs> thank you. I think the worst movie I've seen in the cinema was Open Season. <laughs> open season I saw that at the cinema yeah I think. I think open season for me is this sort of it's the moment I realised that I was no longer a kid who would just watch any old trash yeah and be like eh. I think that was probably about that time yeah yeah it's when I realised that I want to watch things that are good I really don't envy how much money my mum spent on the cinema as a, when I was a kid yeah on these crap films <laughs> my mum always says she really hated Treasure Planet and I liked it at the time. I don't remember it, but everyone says they they love that film. Everyone of our age. It's I remember enjoying it. And I remember coming out, film. and my mum and my auntie and my cousin were all like, "Terrible, didn't like it, hated it." I was like, "I enjoyed." It. I feel, yeah, apparently it's good. Mum always watch says it again. I was <clears> in Treasure <throat> Island. Mum always says to me, "The the worst thing I ever dragged her to watch," and I remember loving it, was uh, the Yu Gi Oh movie. Yeah, I've never watched it. No, played it. I never played Pokemon. I never seen Pokemon. <laughs> Mum says that was the worst thing she ever had to endure. Worse than Open Season, worse than Treasure Planet. It was the <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh movie. But I remember a really weird part of when we went to go see the Yu-Gi-Oh movie was that there was a guy behind us in his like twenties eating an apple with his feet up on the seat in front of him. In the cinema. Yeah. <laughs> this is. Do you remember when there was an Odeon on um on Oxford Road? Near the Where was that? Near the Palace Theatre, near the McDonald's. Oh, where's McDonald's? In the Palace Theatre. Okay, no. There was an Odeon there. near the corner house. Hmm. Near there, though, yeah. So there was an Odeon there. And, um, yeah, we saw Yu Gi Oh there. And you got, like, free cards. And, um, yeah, but the guy was eating his apple. And he had, he had his oh, feet playing up. cards. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and he was eating an apple and he had his feet up in, in the chair. In front of him. And there's a bit where, like, Yu Gi starts dying. And he was laughing his head off. He was having a great time. And I'm there, eight years old, like, excuse me, the pharaoh is dying. <laughs> Show some respect. <laughs> That's his name. He's called Yugi. Right, it's, so, 
there's Yugi. Oh, no. Then the Pharaoh. I've asked. <laughs> the Pharaoh is called Yami slash Atem or the Pharaoh. But there's actually someone called Yugi. Yeah. Is there someone called Pokemon in Pokemon? Yes. Really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Pokemon Ketchum. The Ash's dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we'll call it there. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening to the first episode of Snapshot Meets. Thank uh, you. Charlie, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. It's actually been really fun. Yeah, I think it's definitely been an erratic conversation, but I think that perfectly encapsulates who you are as a creative. <laughs> erratic. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'll take that as a compliment. So yeah, so you you can subscribe to Charlie on YouTube, uh, Mad Stains. I'll link that in the description box. Weirdly, it went a lot smoother than I thought it would go. <laughs> yeah, no, I thought you were going to be a lot more offensive. Uh, well, yeah. I, I could have been yeah so but that's <laughs> it. you can subscribe to you you can subscribe to Charlie on YouTube uh, I'll link his channel in the description subscribe to us on YouTube uh, follow us on Twitter at snapshot MTC all the links that you need will be in the pinned tweet you can follow Charlie on Twitter at okay so this is weird because your Twitter used to be at Charles Gasson yeah. then in the description for artism you misspelled it that was Kieran and instead of changing the description you changed your at that was your idea, but it was, As a joke. it was the only thing that could have been done. So Charlie's Twitter, which will also be linked in the description. Try is... and type Charles Gasson and then switch the first A and H. So it's yeah. C-A-H and so then it's... the rest is the, the same. Yeah, so it's Charles Gasson, but the H and the A are I'm switched. I'm sorry to anyone who has dyslexia. That must be a nightmare to read. <laughs> At Carl's Gasson. Carl's Harris. <laughs> At Carl's Gasson. But anyway, <laughs> you can follow him there. You can follow us at Snapchat MTC. Um, come back next week for the gas on cut of this podcast <laughs> gonna be completely r rated <laughs> <laughs> come back the week after for Scooby Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed uh... where we unleash our own monsters wait no that's my cut sorry <laughs> <laughs> anyway thank you Charlie for coming on thank you so much um, and yeah this will be this will be um, not weekly not monthly it will come around when it comes around whenever you want whenever you feel like it man yeah um this will be a series where i speak to different creatives and courtney will speak to different creatives early years about have you got anyone else on the bill i do who have you got up who's got so up? i will be speaking to uh spoken word artist emmy alderson okay pretty soon uh not poet spoken word artist, spoken word artist. specifically I will also be speaking to Courtney. Courtney will speak to me. Courtney of Snapshot Media yeah. fame. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'll speak to her. She'll speak to me. Um, there are other, I also want to speak to um, Marissa Dolan, who is uh, of Open Quote Theatre. Okay. Uh, she's got some shows coming. And also, I also want to speak to a few people, but I've not actually mentioned it to them yet because I wanted to do the first episode first. You should let them know. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to say their names without letting them know. Emmy and Marissa Nova coming on. Okay. So that's fine. And so do you. And so does Courtney. Because she does it anyway. But uh, that's like five episodes right there. That's that's brilliant. Man. Yeah. You've got good good stuff coming up. We've got I like this. If it's like half an hour, 45 minutes, that's a really good length. Yeah. Because, well, right now I've been recording for an hour and a half. But there's the cold open that I need to edit. And then there's... The open's a bit that you probably don't have to edit. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Apart from like the first five minutes. Yeah. But there's nothing. Um... All the links you need will be in the description box. Me and Connie will be back for a normal episode pretty soon. We're going to speak. My Twitter going to be in there. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, me and Connie will be back soon for a normal episode. We'll be talking all things Avengers Endgame. Ah, oh! um, both spoilies and non spoilies. Just get so. me on for the boring podcast, man. <laughs> the one about, way more interesting. <laughs> the one about you is the boring podcast. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, I've been I've been Stephen. This has been Charlie Gasson. Charles Gasson, filmmaker extraordinaire. <laughs> uh, thank you all so much for listening and uh, see you next time have a nice day oh, that's nice yeah thank you <laughs>